This video is about the Transfer Entitlement Program, the Cal Grant for students who transfer from a California community college to a four-year university. We hope that you find this video helpful and that you will use these practices when working with the Transfer Entitlement Program. Ed Code 69436 spells out the E2 requirements. Transfer Entitlement Awardees are students who do not already have a Cal Grant, transfer directly from a California community college to a bachelor degree granting institution, and are under age 28 by December 31st of the award year. Now we will review the eligibility criteria. As we saw in Ed Code 69436, the Transfer Entitlement Award is for students transferring from a California community college to the BDGI who meet these additional requirements. The requirements can be met through option A, which includes being a high school graduate or equivalent and a California resident at the time of high school graduation. Option B is for a student who did not graduate high school and was a California resident on their 18th birthday. In addition, students must complete a financial aid application by March 2nd, be under age 28 on December 31st of the award year, transfer from a community college to a BDGI in the year awarded, the income and assets must be within the ceilings, and they must have sufficient financial need and a California Community College GPA of 2.4. Data from both the community college and from the student's FAFSA or DREAM Act application is used to identify potential E2 students. These students must have at least a 2.4 community college cumulative GPA, they must be listed on a California community college enrollment file, have at least one bachelor degree granting institution listed on their financial application, be under the age of 28 on December 31st of the award year, and meet the financial requirements. It may help to see what happens during the awarding process behind the scenes. WebGrants uses the data submitted by colleges and from the FAFSA or DREAM Act application to filter results and determine eligibility. This may also help you understand the errors that students make on their applications to be given E2 consideration in the year they will transfer. Step one is to determine if it is a transfer entitlement applicant. This is determined from the community college enrollment file, the GPA, the BDGI listed on an application, and being under the age of 28. Step two is the validation. Once the commission receives the FAFSA or DREAM Act application, ICERs are extracted into web grants and are matched to a GPA. If the ICERs cannot be matched to a GPA, they remain in the system but are set aside, meaning no Cal Grant A or B consideration can be given until a match is made. Step three includes the non-financial edits, which include California residency, residency at time of high school graduation, an eligible California school is listed, no bachelor's degree to receive, education level is less than five, remaining Cal Grant eligibility, and being at an eligible school for a specific program, GPA, and remaining eligibility by program. Step four are the financial edits, which include the income ceilings, asset ceilings, and financial need. Step five, after passing all edits, E2 students are placed on hold until they complete the necessary certification form. Now that we know how students are identified and offered preliminary E2 awards, let's check out some transfer scenarios on the next slide. As we go through these scenarios, keep in mind that E2 awardees are students who do not already possess a Cal Grant. If a student doesn't receive a Cal Grant as a high school entitlement applicant, they have a second shot to get a transfer entitlement award if they take the community college to university pathway. A student may transfer to a bachelor degree granting institution in any term, fall, winter, or spring of the regular academic year in which they were awarded E2, as long as they were enrolled at a California community college for any term in the prior academic year. In the first scenario, this is the traditional transfer pathway. In the second scenario, 
The student was at the community college in fall 2019 term, but did not attend in spring 2020. This student transferred to a four-year school in spring of the following 2020-2021 academic year and is eligible for a spring 2021 payment at the BDGI. To satisfy all terms, the student or the school must post leave of absence for fall 20 since an E2 award cannot be paid at the community college. In the third scenario, this student attended both the community college and the BDGI in the same academic year. Since E2 cannot be paid at a community college, the student or the school must report LA for fall 20 so that all terms are satisfied. In scenario four, the student is not eligible because he or she did not transfer to the BDGI in the year awarded E2. The student had already transferred in spring of 2020 before being awarded E2 in 2020-2021. This is a special scenario specific to early admits offered by the college. For audit purposes, the school must indicate on school records that the student is an early admit. The student will not receive a payment in the academic year 2019-2020, but is eligible for the E2 payment beginning 2020-2021. Many students are not picked up for E2 consideration because they omit the essential data from their FAFSA or DREAM Act application, such as listing that they are pursuing a bachelor degree and listing a BDGI. Creating an educational plan with an advisor will guide students so that they know when they are transfer ready. Advisors preparing students for transfer should coach students to include necessary data on the FAFSA or DREAM Act application so they will be processed for E2 consideration. If your student is E2 eligible, but was not processed for transfer entitlement because they did not complete the FAFSA or DREAM Act application correctly, have the student submit an updated ICER and submit a G21 to either withdraw a competitive Cal Grant if applicable and to request to manually process. In regards to new transfers or continuing students, Schools indicate whether an E2 awardee is a new transfer or eligible or a continuing student ineligible. The at least one payment rule does not apply to renewal E2s. Spring and summer transfers are eligible as early admits provided school records reflect special or early admit. Although students may only be paid as an E2 in the academic year awarded the transfer entitlement grant. Here are some example transfer scenarios. The first one is a new transfer where a student attended a UC in 1920, then returned to a community college in 2021, maybe to bring their grades up after being on academic probation at the UC. Then they transferred to a CSU in 21-22 and was awarded E2. Even though this student had already started at a BDGI, the CSU accepts them as a new transfer instead of a continuing student, and as long as they meet the eligibility requirements, the student is eligible for E2. The second scenario is a continuing student. The student attends UC Davis in 1920, goes to a community college in 2021, and then returns to UC Davis in 2122, and is also awarded E2 in 2122. However, they are not eligible for E2 because they are a continuing student not a new transfer. The school will report IT on the roster. Let's look at the steps that students must take to get awarded and to self-certify eligibility. Remind students that they are required to establish their Web Grants for Students portal in order to claim their E2 award by electronically submitting the G6 transfer entitlement certification. Many students disqualify themselves by submitting the G6 incorrectly. They often list the community college on both questions 6 and 7. When this situation occurs, contact CSAC for guidance on how to correct it. When a student is preliminarily awarded the E2 award, a message appears on the roster that informs the school of the status that the award is on hold until the student submits the completed G6.
One issue is students transfer the year prior to receiving the E2 award. You can encourage students to work with their college advisor to develop an educational plan so they know exactly when they will be ready to transfer. Then, on their financial aid application, they need to ensure to indicate first bachelor's degree and list at least one BDGI. If you have an E2 eligible student who was not awarded due to an application error, have the student update their application and the school submits a grant record change form. In the reason field, add please reprocess for E2 consideration and the updated ICER transaction number. CSAC will manually process the updated ICER for transfer entitlement consideration. California has 15 community college campuses that offer bachelor degree programs. These programs were designed with local employment needs in mind and are not offered at the CSUs or UCs in those regions. Since these schools offer bachelor programs, students enrolled in these programs can be potentially eligible for E2 awards as well as the middle class scholarship. However, identifying eligible students is a manual process for schools, as shown on the next slide. The existing web grant system was not designed to allow a Cal Grant A or the tuition fees of a Cal Grant B to be paid at a community college. Therefore, students enrolled in a community college baccalaureate program are not automatically selected for the transfer entitlement Cal Grant awards. Rather, the E2 selection process for the CCBA students is manual and requires the community college to submit enrollment data for students who are potentially eligible. Be sure to include the file name of any files uploaded via secure file transfer. Schools must verify E2 transfer entitlement eligibility for students who are randomly selected for verification. Let's look at this on the next slide. Schools are responsible for confirming E2 eligibility of students who are flagged for AB 840 verification. Students who are flagged for E2 verification are identified on the display roster and on the E2 verification report. Schools must verify a student meets the requirements through collecting documentation, which we will review next. The acceptable forms of documentation to support E2 requirements are listed in this table. For high school graduation, you can use high school transcripts or a diploma. For California residency, use the high school transcripts, tax returns, a California driver's license, or utility bills. To confirm under age 28, a California driver's license. Direct transfer from the community college to the four-year university, you can use the transcripts for a community college and BDGI. For unmet need, you can use the tax return to review income information on the FAFSA or the DREAM Act application. And then you'll want to calculate the cost of attendance minus the EFC to receive the unmet need. And the 2.4 GPA will be submitted by the California Community College. It's a good practice to collect copies of these documents from all E2 awardees in anticipation of being flagged in the future. Nearly all reports, including the E2 verification report, are located in the data transfer screen under Report Download. This is how to clear the AB 840 flag. Schools either choose P, verified as eligible, or N, verified as not eligible, from the drop-down box. The top image is how verified as eligible appears on the roster. The hold is released and the record is now ready for payment. The bottom image is how the roster looks when verified as not eligible is selected. The award is withdrawn and the student record is moved to the ineligible section of the roster. If a student does not meet all E2 eligibility requirements, report ineligible for transfer, IT, this will move the student to the ineligible section of the roster. We would now like to go over some additional updates and resources available to you. The Commission communicates with high schools and colleges via our listserv, so if you're not receiving our alerts, you're missing out. Follow the link at the bottom of the Commission's homepage at www.csac.ca.gov 
to choose the types of alerts and notifications you wish to receive. Once subscribed, you will receive operation memos and special alerts in your email to keep you up to date and informed about financial aid programs and operations. The CalGrant Handbook provides program overview information as well as various scenarios and examples. The Commission is actively building upon our training library to include training on additional topics and formats. We currently offer the following, live webinars, annual statewide financial aid training, regional training, YouTube training videos, ad hoc personalized trainings, cash for college workshops, and train the trainer workshops. Here is the path to navigate to sign up for our trainings. From our homepage, click on the Schools and Counselors tab, select either high school staff or college staff, and then click on Trainings. Cash for College events are free and open to both high school and college students who need assistance with FAFSA and DREAM Act application completion. Some organizations will charge to prepare the application, both of which are free. Don't let your students or their families pay to submit a free application. The cashforcollege.org website allows students to request a list of virtual workshops. If your school or your organization would like to get involved, consider hosting a virtual Cash for College workshop. If you get at least 50 applicants, you can receive up to $300 in site support funds. Remember, even if your student misses the March 2nd Cal Grant priority deadline, other financial aid is still available after that deadline. For FAFSA and DREAM Act filers, September 2nd is the Cal Grant and GPA deadline for community college students. For FAFSA filers, Pell Grant and work study funds may still be available, and private scholarships have varying deadlines. DREAM Act applicants have the California College Promise Grant and the Student Success Completion Grant that are still available, and some private scholarships may be available to DREAMers as well. Transfer entitlement trifold brochures are available and can be shipped free of charge through ePubs. We also have online and printed publications available in different languages. Thank you for watching this video. Please engage with us on social media where we post updates and important deadlines for students and schools. Please check out our websites for more information. If you have any questions, please contact school support by phone or email. Thank you.